Okay guys, welcome back and, and in today's class we are going to discuss about the output devices and the storage devices. Let's begin the class. Let's start. What is output devices or what are the output peripherals? Output peripherals are connected to a computer and output the result of computer processing in various forms such as electronic display, printed text like printer, a video, we can use the monitor or maybe the projector and in audio form. For the audio we can use the speakers and or the headphone. That's all about the introduction of output devices. Now let's discuss the first output device which is monitor. Monitor allow user to see the output from the computer on electronic display. Feature of a monitor include the screen size which is measured, measured diagonally and the resolution which is measured in pixels and uh, the energy efficiency measured such as going into a low power standby mode if no input is detected. That is all about the monitor. Here is an exam question. Which one of these is the unit used to measure the screen resolution? We have four options inch, mbps, pixels and bit. The correct answer is Pixel. The next output device is called the printer. A printer is an external hardware output device that prints electronic data from a computer or other devices. There are three types of printers. The, the first one is called the dot matrix printer, then we have the inkjet printer, and the last type of the printer is called the laser printer. Now let's discuss each printer in detail. The first type of printer is called the dot matrix printer. These printers are sometimes called impact printers. There is a second name for those printers, which is impact printers. This is because the print is made by hitting or impacting the paper through a ribbon of ink, and this process is very noisy. They print by hitting the paper, and this process is also very noisy because the ribbon is continuously hitting the paper. The paper often has the number of carbon copies layers. It can make several copies of the same document at the same time. The benefit of using this printer, it can print several copies of the same document at the same time. Next type of printer is called the inkjet printer. These printers are use the cartridge containing the different colored ink. These things called the cartridge. They have four cartridges. The first one is cyan, magenta, yellow, and the black. We call them CMYK. CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. K for the black. Black ink is held in one cartridge while the colored cartridge is often split into the three colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Tiny dots of these ink are spread onto the paper to form the image of the text. So that's how the, the inkjet printers work. Next type of printer is called the laser printer. These printers contain a rotating cylinder or drum that holds an electrical charge. And a laser is used to discharge the, the certain points on the drum and draw an image. Electrically charged toner is attracted to those points on the drum and is heated onto the paper that is passed over the drum. There's a very nice video that illustrates how those different printers work. I suggest you to go to the YouTube and watch that video and you will understand how each printer works. Now let's compare those three printers. We are going to compare those three printers, dot matrix printer, printer, inkjet printer, and laser printer. And here is the criteria like the speed, printer cost, cost per copy, color printing, quality, and example where it is used. So the first type of printer is, is the dot matrix printer. This one is the speed is the slowest. Next one, the print cost is cheap, cost per copy is low and the coloring printer they're rare just so like most of the printers they don't print the coloring print the quality of print is low and example where it's used when multiple copies are required and you need to print multiple copy or same document then we use the dot matrix printer next type of printer is called the inkjet printer the speed of the inkjet printer is faster than the dot matrix printer and the printer cost is medium it's not very high not very low cost per copy is high because it uses the ink you have to replace the cartridge every time next one is the color printing yes you can print the color documents using the the inkjet printer quality of print is high and this used in the home printing and the photographs the last type of printer is called the laser printer this one is the newest one newest technology the speed of this printer is very fast on this printer is very expensive the cost per copy is medium it's not very high not very low color printing yes it can print the color document and the quality of the print is very high the highest one among those two an example of where it is used this type of printer usually used in high volume printing often used in the offices in the offices we use this type of printer laser printer the next type of printer is called a 3d printer 3d printer this is a new type of printer a 3d or three dimension printer create a real life version of digital model you can create the real life object using the 3d printers these printers work by adding layers of heated material from bottom to all the way to the top. We start from the bottom and then add the material to, to all the way to the top to create the model. 3D printed model take a long time to create and often used to create complex items sometimes with working parts. You can create something working thing using the, those printer and usually when you want to create something that really work in the real life we create that thing in parts some of these items could not be assembled in any other way that's why we create them in parts example of 3d printed object include airplane parts artificial limbs automotive prototype models and even pasta and chocolate you can also create the food using the 3d printer and you can also create some other objects using 3d printers how this 3d printer works you need a laptop and the laptop you can install some specific 3d software where you first create a model and then feed that model to the printer and then printer will try to create the same object that's how the 3d printers work next type of output device is called the plotter what are the plotters plotters are used 
by various professionals including the product designers, architects, engineers and cartographers. The plotter draw the, the high quality images created in computer edit software or CAD software onto a large sheet of paper. It is accomplished this by drawing the lines on the paper with the pen that can raised above and dropped below the page. That's how it works. Sometimes the plotters can also roll the paper backward and the forward. What is the difference between plotter and the printer? Printer can only print something on a small paper, right? We usually see that if you want to print something on a small paper, like A4 size paper, we have different types of paper, right? We use the printer. But what if you want to print something on a large paper? You want you want to print some large panaflex, right? For this thing, you need the plotter because printer, you can say this is it, it can only print the small documents. Next type of output device is called the data projectors. Data projectors are used for the home entertainment such as TV or playing games or for a classroom and business presentations. Usually this type of output device is used for the meetings or maybe in the school or classrooms. Maybe in your classroom you also have this type of device. Your teacher just connect his laptop with those devices and then try to show you the PPT from his laptop on a big screen. So there are some features of those data projectors, for example, light bulbs. These bulbs can have various brightness levels measured in luminous. We can measure the, the brightness of those bulbs in luminous. This is a measurement unit and expensive to replace. Those light bulbs are very expensive to replace. Resolution, this is another feature. Like the monitor, they also use a different quality uh, screens. Next one is the zoom functionality. Uh, the projected image can be made larger by enlarging the image using either optical zoom or the digital zoom. And the last part is the portability. Some smaller and lighter projectors are available and these are easier to move. You can take them anywhere. For example, if you're going out somewhere, you can just take the projector in your laptop bag and then you can use it anywhere you want. Next output device is called the speakers. The speaker is also an output device. The speakers allow a computer to output sound okay, and often come in pairs. We usually have the two speakers to provide the stereo sound. Why we need two? Because to give you a stereo sound. Multiple speakers are commonly used to provide surrounding sound in home entertainment system and these speakers need a special amplifier that can deliver different level of sound to each speaker to provide spatial awareness. It's all about the speakers. The next type of output device is called the control device. Control device often known as equators are the system component that make something happen in a physical world. This type of devices make something happen in real life world. These devices are often mechanical. Example of equator include we have the walls, we have the heaters, we have the pistons, we have the coolers and we have the motors. That's all about the, the output devices. Now let's go to the exam question. Here is the exam question. Describe how an inkjet printer works. Here is the answer. You can pause the video. You can read the answer. And the next question is, this question is very interesting. State the output device that would produce this object. You can see this object. Can you tell me in the comments that which output device will produce this object? I will show you the answer, but if you guess the answer correct, you can also write your answer in the comments. We use the 3D printer to print this object. Now we are moving to the secondary story devices. So now let's discuss the secondary story device. We are done with output devices. Now we discuss the secondary story devices. The secondary story devices is used for storing documents for the future use. This is the first use. The second one is storing an application ready to be loaded into RAM when user open the application. This is the, the use of the storage devices. Here you can see the example. We have the hard disk, we have the CD and the USB. All those devices are the storage devices. Storage devices are used to store data or software that is used in computer system. Storage devices can be either internal or external. Internal devices connected directly to the computer's motherboard. There are two types of storage devices. One is called the internal storage devices that we directly connect to the, the, the computer's motherboard. And the other one, they are called the external storage devices. For example, the USB. USB you just connect to the USB port. And the CD. CD is also an external storage, right? These are the examples of the external and inter internal storage. External devices are, the, are connected to computer's motherboard through parts and adapters on the computer exterior. We can connect using the parts and uh, on the exterior of the computer such as the USB port. Type of storage devices, the first type of storage devices, we will discuss the hard disk now after this one. This, I will give you the overview here. Hard disk drives, HDD, uh, contain hard disk media. These devices uh, connect the disk to the motherboard either directly through a wireless adapter or a wired port. You can connect, there are three ways to connect the hard disk to the laptop, right? One is directly connect to the motherboard. Second one, you can connect it uh, using a USB port. And the third one is you can have a Wi-Fi. You can just put it there and then you can connect your laptop to, to, to that hard disk using the Wi-Fi and store the data to that hard disk like back up it or just read the data from that hard disk then we have another type of hard disk is called the SDD or solid state drives also known as the flash drives have flash memory media other than that they are the same as the hard disk here you can see the picture this is the hard disk they have the moving part they have the disk and this is the SDD it doesn't have any moving part it's, it's, it's made up of the, the, the chips you, know, you can see here that is the difference so hard disk have a moving part but SDD doesn't have any moving part 
Next one is optical disk drive. This is the optical disk drive. This, this device is used to read data from the optical disk. So the optical disk drive contain optical disk media. Newer drives are often compatible with the older media. For example, if you have the newer an optical disk drive, you can read the C data from the CDs and the DVDs. But if you have the older one, you have the CD-ROM, you can only read data from the CDs. You won't be able to read data from DVDs or Blu-ray disc. For example, a disk drive can read Blu-ray media, can also read the DVD and the CD media. It's also known as the backward compatibility. CD room can only read the CD data, but the, the Blu-ray, this is the newest one, Blu-ray drive can read the data from the Blu-ray disc, DVD disc, and from the CD disc. Now let's talk about the hard disk and the part of the hard disk. Hard disks are made up of, of many concentric platers. We have the different platers. It could be four, five, three, two, one. There are many platers, depending on the storage. This disc is called the pl plater, and these platers make up a cylinder that spins on a central spindle. This one, this thing is called the spindle, and that disc is spin, uh, spin around this spindle. A reed right head moves on an arm across the tracks of the platers. This thing, this arm, this is called the reed right head. This thing move on the this, this disc and read or write the data uh, on that disc. The amount of uh, time it takes to read or write head to access data on the tracks is determined by the, how fast the cylinder or the plater spins and how fast the read write head is moved across the tracks and when reading a read write head changes the magnetic field into an electri electrical current and when writing it transforms electrical current into a magnetic field that's how it works the typical spin speed are the 5400 5, revolution per minute or rpm or in or maybe 7200 rpm this is the typical speed and the hardest speed is measured in rpm rpm revolution per minute now the average seek time for a read write head is 4 to 15 milliseconds this is the average seek time for the read write head to read data from the disk next type of storage media we call it optical storage this type of optical media include the cd dvd and blu-ray disc there are three types of optical media we have cd dvd and blu-ray disc cd stands for compact disc cd can store up to 7 700 MB of data. So the data that you can store on this one disk is 700 MB. The data is written to the disk using a laser which writes data to the, the plastic layer beneath the layer of aluminium and acrylic. That's how it works. So here's a fun fact, you can read this one. The Bill Gates showed how many data you can store on one CD in 1924. This much, this much documents you can store on one, one CD. The next one is the DVD. DVD looks very much like the CD. They, are, they look same. Data is written to the DVD using a short wavelength of a red laser light, which allows the DVD to store more data. So DVD can store more data than the CD. They can store data from 4.7 GB on a single side. DVD can be two-sided, right? On one side, we can store 4.7 GB of data. Data on double-sided dual-layer disk can store up to 18 GB data. On one disk, you can store up to 18 GB of data. Then we have the Blu-ray disc. Blu-ray discs are similar to CDs and DVDs, but it uses scratch protection coating. When you have a scratch on CD or the DVD, you won't be able to read the data. But the Blu-ray has one advantage that it is scratch-proof. Even if you have some scratch on the disc, you can still read the data from that disc. Violet laser light is used to store data at greater density than the, the red laser light used in DVD. We use the violet laser light to store data on the Blu-ray disc. The Blu-ray Blu uh, optical storage can store up to 25 GB on a single side and a double-sided disc can store up to 50 GB of data. You can store up to 50 GB of data on a, on a Blu-ray disc. Next type of storage media is called the flash media and the magnetic tape. We're going to discuss these two in this slide. Flash media are more energy efficient than the hard disk as they do not have any moving parts. This type of storage, storage do not have any moving parts. Like hard disk, they have a moving part. They have the, the cylinder, they have the redirect head. But this type of media doesn't have any moving parts. For the, uh, for the same reason, they are also less likely to fail when they are moved around. For example, if you have a hard disk and it fell down from your hand, it, it will broke, it will not work. But this type of storage media, if it fell down, it will still work because it doesn't have any moving parts. This makes them suitable for the use in the portable devices. The magnetic tape was originally designed to record sound, but it is now also used to store data. We also use this one to store the data. Next slide, we'll uh, compare the different types of storage media. We have the different media, for example, hard disk, flash media, optical media, and magnetic tape. And here is the criteria. Based on this criteria, we are going to compare them. For example, data access speed, maximum capacity, cost per GB, use, and portability. Let's first talk about the hard disk. Hard disk data access speed is fast. The, the maximum capacity is varies, is varies up to 128 GB. The cost per GB is high and use in server or the personal computers or for the backup the portability no not suitable portable because it, it has the moving parts right next type of device sorry media is called the flash media the data access speed is fastest one what about the capacity so it's about, it, it up to many tbs terabytes of so cost per gb very high these days it's, it's low it's not very high because usually we have this type of media where we use the flash media is used in the laptop and mobile phones. Portability, yes, we, we can use it as a portable media because it does not have any moving part. Then we have the optical storage, optical media, data access speed is slow. The the, uh, the maximum capacity, we have three different optical media, right? We have CD, DVD, and Blu-ray. CD can store up to 700 MB, DVD can store up to 18 GB, and Blu-ray can store up to 50 GB. Cost per GB is medium, and where we use, we used for the multimedia, music, games, and films, uh, and file backup. We use those to, usually use those to store the movies, or maybe games, or for the backup. Is it suitable for the 
the portability no it's not suitable suitable because why because it can easily break it's made up of the plastic right and also cd and dvd are not scratch proof if there's a scratch on the disc you won't be able to read the data Next one is the magnetic tape. This one is the slowest one. The speed is slow. Relate access speed is slow. The maximum capacity is like up to 185 terabytes. It's very high and also varies. Cost per GB is the lowest one and use the whole system backup and the archive. You can use this one to back up your whole system. If you have a very large data, then you can use those things because they're cheap and you can back up your data on this one. For the portability, no, they are not suitable for the portability. To summarize everything, the hard disk changes the magnetic charge of a plater to either negative or positive depending on whether the value is 0 or 1. Uh, optical media use tiny bumps on the disk surface to represent 0 or 1. Flash media uses different level of electric, uh, electrical charge held in tiny individual cells to represent 0 and 1. Magnetic tapes changes the magnetic charge of the tape to either negative or positive depending on whether the value is zero or one that's it we are done with the unit one in the next video we start the unit two which is about the software see you in the next class and have a good day bye